Hi friends, it's Mrs. Darcy McGuire, your writing imagineer and mouse experts. And I am reading you a story today and going to be asking you some questions to help you if you'd like to do a writer's workshop called There's No Place Like Space. And it's all about our solar system. Um, it's by Tish Robb, illustrated by Aristes Ruiz, and it's a cat in a hat book. So obviously it was inspired by our friend, Dr. Seuss, and it's a rhyming book. And I picked this for two reasons. Number one, I selected this because it's a rhyming book and April is National Poetry Month. And number two, it's really informational because it talks all about outer space. And of course, our planet Earth, is part of the solar system and we're in a global situation right now where we are trying to protect ourselves on our home planet so i wanted to really kind of you know what i'm gonna say i really wanted to connect with both of those ideas poetry and our planet so here we go there's no place like space I'm the cat in the hat and we're off to have fun we'll visit the planets the stars and the Sun there is no place like space I will prove it to you your mother will not mind at all if I do jump in here we go we will fly up so high we can dance on the moon and play games in the sky. We will swing past the stars, and in case you have missed them, you'll soon see. Uh oh, what are we going to say? The planets in our solar system. There are nine of these planets that circle the sun, and soon you'll be able to name every one. Mercury. Mercury is close to the sun's burning light. It is hot in the daytime, but freezing at night. There's Mercury. On Venus, the weather is always the same. Hot, dry, and windy with no chance of rain. Can you guess the next planet? Well, here is a clue. It is my home and home to thing one and thing two. You have been living on it each day since your birth. It's the third from the sun. It's our planet. Yep, some of you said it. Earth. And we just celebrated Earth Day on April 22nd. So it's fresh in our minds. Earth, it spins all the time, round and round like a top. It turns once every day, and it never will stop. This question had thing one and thing two in a tizzy. If the Earth's always spinning, why don't we feel dizzy? We don't feel the Earth as it spins on its way, because we're spinning right with it right now every day. So think about that, girls and boys. The earth is spinning so fast right now all the time, and we don't even feel it because we're spinning right with it. Pretty cool, huh? Next here is Mars. It's the color of rust. We sneeze here because it is covered in dust. Travel to Jupiter and you will find it is bigger than all other planets combined. So Jupiter is really, really big. Saturn has rings. It's so light, who would think? It could float in an ocean and not even sink. So that's really interesting about its gravity. That it can float in the ocean with its rings and not sink. 
Pretty cool. A planet can have satellites that surround it. Uranus has lots of these objects around it. There are colors in space. I will show some to you. Neptune, you see, is a beautiful blue. And you might be able to make a connection with King Neptune, who's one of the um, characters that we think of when we think of the sea, the beautiful blue sea. So again, just like everything, there's connections everywhere. If you lived on Pluto, it would not be nice. Some astronomers think it is covered in ice. It is chilly and cold every night and all day, for the sun's just a speck in the sky far away. An astronomer studies what's up in the sky. Thing too wants to be one. In fact, so do I. And actually, it's interesting about Pluto because there were there's been a lot of research done about Pluto actually not being a planet, an official planet in recent years. So that might be something you could do as an eye search, especially my older friends who have access to the internet and all of uh, the research engines that you may be taking advantage of. That would be pretty cool to find out exactly why Pluto was designated as it was and what was found out about it. That would be pretty neat. And you could share that with us in your writer's workshop template that's in the Google Classroom. We have seen all nine planets. Now here's a trick to remember their names and remember them quick. Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mitzas just arrived, or excuse me, just served us 999 pizzas. Look, and there's a little, new. we call that a mnemonic device because it's a way that you can remember something by using little clues and signals. In this case, it happens to be the acrostic. So Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mitzas just served us 999 pizzas. And of course, Mallory is Mercury. And then Valerie is Venus. Emily is Earth, our home planet. Mitzas, which is a fun name, is Mars. Just as Jupiter served Saturn, us Uranus, 999 Neptune, and Pizzas. Pluto. So there's a little way to try to remember it. The first letter of each of these words is the same as the first letter in each of the planets you name. Oh my gosh, look at all that pizza. Do you enjoy pizza? We really love it here at the McGuire house. We usually get it on Friday nights. It's our little, our little tradition. I'm not sure why, but that's kind of what we do on Friday nights, pizza night. How about you? Is Friday night pizza night at your house? Just curious. Now, here is a game you can play in the skies. Connect all the stars you can see with your eyes. It's star dot to dot. Use your imaginations and you'll see big pictures we call constellations. A dog, the great bear, and Leo the lion. Taurus the bull and a hunter, Orion. So if you ever look at the constellations in the sky... They make up all of these neat shapes and people have named them. It's really very interesting in the night sky to look up and see the stars and see how that you might be able to connect them. A star in the sky may look small like a dot, but it's really a big glowing ball and it's hot. And there's one star by far that's our favorite one. We can't live without it. It's a star called, I bet you know what it's called. The biggest star in the solar system. What do you think it is? Yes. The sun. There it is. The sun. From the earth, it looks big. There is one reason why. It is closest to earth of the stars in the sky. But be careful and never look right at the sun. Your eyes would get hurt and that would not be fun. How big is the sun? We just heard right this minute. A million of our Earths could all fit right in it. So that's pretty big, friends. A million Earths. A million Earths could fit in the sun. That is a lot of Earths. So the sun's huge. Oh, look at the time. We must go very soon. But first, we must take a quick look at the moon. There's the moon. The moon does not shine in the sky in the night, but
but like a big mirror reflects the sun's light. So when you see the moon shining in the sky, it's really not shining on its own. It's reflecting from the sun's own sunlight. See how the cat in the head has the mirror held up like that? So that's, that's pretty interesting. The universe is a mysterious place. We are only just learning what happens in space. So I brought you a present to look in the sky. Just put this telescope up to your eye. Oh dear, I must go fly back up to the stars and take things one and two out to dinner on Mars. But there's lots to discover and it might be you who looks up in the sky. and find something that's new. Look at that, the cat in the hat and the moon reflected up there, pretty cute. The end. So there were several words that we learned about in this story. So I wanna bring your attention to the glossary. And remember the glossary is where you can find the list of words and definitions. So we're gonna real quickly go over them because maybe that will help you with your writer's workshop when you're writing about this story, about your connections and about your thoughts, your summary and your critique. So astronomer, an astronomer is a person who studies the planets, stars, sun, moon, and other heavenly bodies. Constellation, a group of stars that form a pattern in the sky that look like a picture. Satellite, a natural or man-made object or woman-made object that moves around a planet. Solar system, we're on this one, solar system, solar system, the sun and all the planets that move around it. Telescope, an instrument that uses lenses to make faraway objects appear closer. Universe, everything that exists, including the earth, the planets, the stars, and all of space. So that was our glossary. And that, again, was the story. There's no place like space. So I hope that you enjoyed that reading of it and that it will help you not only with your writer's workshops, but also for those of you who are writing poetry for the month of April. Um, I hope that that gives you a little bit of inspiration and that you enjoyed it. Until then, friends, stay safe, stay well, stay well. I hope to see you soon. Bye.